Dear listener, welcome to my channel. Topic of this video is t test to check variable significance for linear regression. This is the second video on t test. In first video, I have already explained the concept behind the t test, formula for t test, and how to check the significance of the variable with the t test. In this video, I am going to cover more exercises for practice. Now let us start. to measure the relationship between dependent variable and independent variable we use linear regression whenever we conduct a linear regression we are interested in determining whether the relationship between the dependent variable and independent variable is statistically significant t test are used to examine whether a specific variable in the model is statistically significant we use a t test to determine regression slope significance a variable is statistically significant if it is statistically affects the model accuracy and has a strong relation with the dependent variable exercise number 1 y cap is equal to minus 0.10 plus 0.7x this is a linear regression equation and this equation is calculated from given set of five points that is n equal to 5 x is independent variable and y is dependent variable and records are 1 1 2 1 3 2 4 2 5 respectively now here first the question is whether it is significant or not and we always check the t test with the slope so 0.7 is slope and minus 0.10 is intercept and second question is whether beta 1 is positively correlated or not to perform the t test we require some intermediate answer so for that we require y cap now we can calculate the y cap by putting the value of x that is the uh, 1 2 3 4 5 and we will get the corresponding value for y cap now y cap is nothing but the predicted value and y is nothing but the actual value after that we will calculate the residual error that is nothing but difference between these two values make the square and then summation answer is 1.10 now to calculate the standard error we require the variance of the input variable indep input independent variable which is nothing but x by minus x bar square now from this data we can calculate x bar which is equal to 3 and after that we will subtract each value from the average make the square and addition that is nothing but the standard deviation of the input variable now to check whether beta 1 is significant or not we are using the hypothesis testing so we keep null hypothesis in which there is no relationship between the beta 1 and output uh that is beta 1 is not significant and in alternative hypothesis we keep that the beta 1 is significant and uh, the, there is a relation, relationship exist between the beta 1 and output that is beta 1 is significant that is null hypothesis is beta 1 is equal to 0 and alternative hypothesis is beta 1 is not equal to 0 so as it is not equal to 0 it becomes a two tail test the formula for t test is statistic minus parameter divided by standard deviation of statistics that is nothing but the standard error now this value we got from the regression that is nothing but 0.7 and parameter is nothing but for population and we set in a null hypothesis which is equal to 0 so in numerator the value comes 0.7 minus 0 and here we require to first calculate the standard error now before the t calculation we will check the degree of freedom total number of records of five number of independent variable k equal to 1 therefore degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1 which is equal to 3 now numerator is 0.7 minus 0 divided by statistic of beta 1 or standard error this is the formula for standard error and by putting the answer we already calculated this value and this value in this table so we put the value and we get the standard error as 0.19 when we put the standard error into the t formula we are getting the answer 3. 64 now t is 3.64 or degree of freedom is equal to 3 now we can check the t table now we have to check two tail test and here the degree of freedom is on the row side so it is equal to 3 now we will check in which range these values are coming now the t value is 3.64 now here we can check that it's come between 3.18 and 4.5 that is nothing but between 0.05 and 0.02 that is between 95% and 98% confidence this is the rough range whatever even we can check the detail range also so in the next slide we can go for the detail range
from the uh, t table we can check that when confidence is 97 we are getting plus or minus 3.8 mine and for 96 percent we are getting plus or minus 3.48 our answer is 3.64 so it lie between 97 and 96 but we always take on low range so therefore the confidence is 96 percent so in exam if question comes the question is generally coming on a particular confidence interval which is present in t table so based on that we are have to give the answer <coughs> so if in exam if question comes on 95% confidence then it is accepted means here we are uh, rejecting null hypothesis and accepting alternative hypothesis because we are satisfying the condition so here it proves that that beta 1 is sig significant statistically significant to find out the range of the parameter of beta 1 is the formula is beta 1 is plus or minus t alpha by 2 into standard error now this beta 1 we already got from uh, regression that 0.7 this 0.19 is already calculated that is standard error and this t alpha by 2 this is nothing but the same that is alpha by 2 is nothing but uh, if we check the above value we are getting the same value so here the answer is same that is 3.90 and 3.48 that we seen in a previous slide so here we are getting the range of 1.44 to minus 0.041 now here we can check that in this range zero is come and zero we set for the null hypothesis so we are not accepting this range so perfect answer is 96 because in 96 we are getting the range from 0.039 to 1.36 and this range does not contain the zero that is the null hypothesis so this is the perfect range which we should accept of confidence interval so for 97% zero is included and for 96% zero is not included therefore 95 96% confidence is the perfect beta 1 parameter will change or vary from 1.36 to 0.039 now we require to check whether beta 1 is positively correlated or not so slope we can see that slope is positive therefore when x increases y is also increases but we can prove this by hypothesis test so in null hypothesis we will keep that beta 1 is less than or equal to 0 and in alternative hypothesis we will keep that beta 1 is greater than 0 so this becomes the right tail test uh, in null hypothesis we will show that the value is less than or equal to 0 and in alternative we will show that it is greater than 0 now we already proved that it is confidence uh, is at 96% that is nothing but significance level 0.04 the calculated t value is 3.64 and for 96% confidence the t value is plus or minus 3.48 now we are checking with the plus value now to reject the null hypothesis our value should be greater than 3.48 and our answer is 3.64 which is greater than 3.48 therefore we are rejecting the null hypothesis and it proves that beta 1 is positively correlated because alternative hypothesis become the true now we see the exercise 2 this is the same as previous only for the practice i have taken the example so y cap is equal to 0.2 plus 2.6 whether to check the slope is significant or not and whether it is positively correlated or not total five records are there we first require to calculate the y cap then we require to find out the residual error between the actual value and predicted value and the standard deviation of the input independent variable so for same as previous example we perform the calculation and we calculate this value which we require to put into the t formula now again we will keep the null and alternative hypothesis which is equal to zero not equal to zero this not equal to indicates it is a two tail test now here we are putting the value here 2.6 your statistics parameter is over zero and we are calculating the standard error so standard error this is the formula for standard error so it is already we calculated in the table 12.40 degree of freedom is n5 k that is number of independent variables is equal to 1 so degree of freedom is n minus k minus 1 which is equal to 3 so we will put that and we are getting the answer as 0.64 when we put that value into the t formula and we are getting the value of t is 4.06 now we will check that our t answer is 4. 06 and degree of freedom is 3 so we'll check it is coming under which range so it is coming under 0.05 to 0.02 range 
now again we will check the detail level and we can find out that for calculated t value is 4.06 so um, <coughs> for 98 percent we are getting plus or minus 4.54 and for 97 percent we are getting plus or minus 3.89 but as our value is 4.06 so we always take the low range so confidence interval is 97 percent because we always select the low range now same as previous example we can find out the range beta 1 we already know plus or minus t alpha by 2 that is nothing but the t table which is the same value into standard error of that beta 1 parameter parameter which is 0.64 here again we can check that here in this range that is minus 3.062 plus 5.51 0 comes which is nothing but the null hypothesis so this range is not actual but for 97 we can easily get the two we get the interval in which 0 is not present because it starts from 0.11 to 0.509 therefore 97 percent is a perfect and in which 0 is not included and parameter value is having the range from 5.09 to 0.11 and here we can satisfy at 97 percent of confidence interval so in exam even if current comes for 95 that is also acceptable because once it is acceptable for 97 means it is acceptable for all lower range now we will check whether it is positively correlated or not so for that we require to check when it is not positively correlated which we keep in null hypothesis that beta 1 is less than or equal to 0 and for alternative hypothesis we will keep that beta 1 is greater than 0 that is right tail test now we already check that for 97 the uh, it is satisfying and the answer is 3.90 calculated value is 4.06 calculated t value is 4.06 and for 95 confidence it is 3.89 so here it is 3.89 and calculated value is 4.06 so to reject the null hypothesis our answer should be greater than plus 3.89 and it is satisfying therefore parameter b1 is positively correlated now see the third example here whether that minus 3 is significant or not and it is negatively correlated or not so same we will calculate first the x bar then we will calculate the predicted y then we calculated the residual error and the variance of the input independent variable now here again we will keep null hypothesis alternative hypothesis again it is two tail test because we are keeping in null that it is not uh, significant and here we are keeping it is significant then we will put the values same as previous two problems we just require to calculate and we require to put the value here the standard error is 0 0.65 and t value we are getting minus 4.61 now again we will check now here i am checking for the positive but same will come for the negative so answer is minus 4.61 but we will check the interval only uh, we will just take 0.4.61 and we will check the interval interval again for degree of freedom is 3 so it is coming between 0.05 and 0.02 we can find out the exact interval now this is 4.54 and 5.84 and our answer is 4.61 so we are taking the 98 percent confidence because we always select the low range similarly we can find out the range and here for 98 percent we will check that as there is uh, no zero value comes all the range is on the negative side zero is not included so 98 percent is perfect confidence interval and the value of beta 1 can vary from minus 0 0.09 to minus 5.592 now we have to check whether beta 1 is negatively correlated or not so in null hypothesis we will keep that it is not positive negatively correlated and that's why it is greater than or equal to 0 in alternative hypothesis we will keep it is less than 0 now we already proved that it is confident at 98 uh, <coughs> 98 percent and for 98 percent we are answer is this is actually 0 0.02 and for that answer is 4.54 so we, now we are taking the negative so our answer should be less than 4.54 and if we check that 4.61 is less than 4.54 so therefore we are rejecting the null hypothesis 
and we can prove that beta 1 is negatively correlated by using the hypothesis test so this is nothing but all about the t test uh, how to use with the simple linear regression so in this example all uh, examples of uh, only one independent variable but similarly for multiple linear regression we require to apply this t test for in uh, each individual independent variable so in the next variable i am going to explain the f test exercises on f test and then combine t test and f test for multiple linear regression thank you